If you've ever written a story or you've wanted to, you'll know that the start can be really difficult. I'm about to prove that point in spectacular fashion by looking at the opening of the first short story I ever wrote over a decade ago. We're gonna learn what I did wrong, a lot, so that maybe you don't have to make some of the same mistakes that I did. Looking back at your old writing can be a great way to see just how far you've come since you started writing and to avoid making some of the old mistakes that you used to make. It can also be really embarrassing. This story is straight crime, it's absolutely rammed with cliches and it wants so badly to be cool but it just really isn't. That sounds... Um, why does that sound familiar? <laughs> When I read it back recently, what stood out to me about this story was the opening. Mainly because that's as far as I could stand reading. But, instead of deleting the document and firing it off into the endless void, I thought it actually might be a useful exercise for me and maybe other writers to look at how I went wrong and what I would do if I was rewriting this story today. So, I'm 18, I'm at university, here's my first sentence, my killer opening, the start of my writing career. I'm going to read it blind with no context whatsoever. Here we go. The most popular line for tourists on the London Underground is the one that runs between Covent Garden and Leicester Square. Yeah, that's it. So here's why that's bad. Are we reading a guide to transport in London here? I thought we were supposed to be reading a short story. This is fiction that reads like fact. A fact that I distinctly remember pulling off Wikipedia. So there is setting, we do have that. We can assume that the story is set on this tube line or subway line, but it's also passive. We don't even know that for sure. There's nobody there, we're just looking at an empty tube line. Ladies and gentlemen, the service on the There's no characters, no hint of narrative, nothing in fact to suggest this is a story at all. In terms of hooking a reader from the off, I can't imagine any reason why this would, unless they're really interested in tourism statistics or the London Underground. Let's have a look at what the next line was. So that's where I operate quite often. First of all, that's not even a full sentence, Kieran, is it? It's just a runoff from that killer opening that you had. Quick tip here, you know it's not a full sentence because when you isolate it, it makes no sense on its own. However, now at least there's an I in the situation. A character emerges. So we've learned that there's a character and we've learned that they do indeed operate. We still have no idea what they're operating here because it's just so vague, but if I recall from 10 years ago, I think this was actually a stylistic choice of mine. I wanted to be vague, I wanted to be edgy. So I'm going to give myself a pass on this one. Which is pretty generous, I know. Alright, so what's the next line? It was the perfect line for my area of work. Hang on, hang on, hang on. A minute ago we're operating quite often, everything's in the present tense, and now suddenly we're using words like was and putting everything into past tense. This is a common mistake caused by lack of confidence or overthinking your story. Pick a tense and go with it, and if by the end it's not right, then you can change it all as one but don't write half in one tense and half in another because it's an absolute nightmare to edit afterwards. So, when you read all of this together, the most popular line for tourists on the London Underground is the one that runs between Covent Garden and Leicester Square. So that's where I operate quite often. It was the perfect line for my area of work. Is it me or is there something really robotic about those last two short sentences? It kind of feels like it was written by an AI program. It doesn't have much flow to it at all. It reads kind of clunky and it's just not interesting. For some context, the main character of this story is a pickpocket, so that's what I'm talking about. The victims are the tourists on these London Underground trains. This in itself might not be a terrible idea for a story, might not be a good one, but any interest or intrigue this might create in a reader is lost because these opening lines don't have any idea of character or plot. Another quick tip, the opening of your story needs to make a promise to your reader. It needs to say, stick around, I'm interested because of this. Whatever that is, work that out. This opening does not do that. What's the next bit? After years of riding that line, I'd learned when the bumps in the track were and when the carriage was likely to throw people off balance. So we're finally starting to see a story come in here, some idea of a pickpocket bumping into all these tourists and stealing their wallets, but I still don't think it's discernible for a reader. I still don't think that they could figure that out based on this opening. I like the idea of being vague in writing. Done right, it can really spark a reader's interest, but I'm not sure the opening of my very first short story was the great time to be quite this vague. You risk readers tuning out and moving on to something else because they just don't know what the bloody hell's going on. So the big question then, how would I take this 10 year old story and rewrite it now to make it better? It's going to be tough, because the story sucks. 
We need to fix the tenses, we need to introduce a character and perspective much sooner, and we need to be less vague. We need to make the whole thing a bit more interesting from the off. It's the opening, it needs a hook, it needs a bit of action. We also need to make the narration a little bit more active, because it's quite passive at the moment. So, as a reminder, if you can stand it, here's what we had. The most popular line for tourists on the London Underground is the one that runs between Covent Garden and Leicester Square, so that's where I operate quite often. It was the perfect line for my area of work. After years of riding that line, I'd learned when the bumps in the track were and when the carriage was likely to throw people off balance. I think we can all agree, ouch. Here's the updated version. I make most of my cash on the line between Covent Garden and Leicester Square. Tourists don't know where the bumps in the track are, but I do, and I'm waiting for them. They lose their balance, I step in and prop them up, we smile. They know they feel lighter somehow, but they don't realise that's because I've lifted their wallet. While this is arguably better than the first version, and I've improved a lot of what I set out to improve, I still wouldn't actually write this today. And there's one simple reason for that, maybe you've spotted it already. I'm telling, I'm not showing. I'm just describing something that happens. We're not actually there, living in the moment, watching it unfold. This whole opening, even though it's more interesting than it was, is still just exposition really. I've got a video just up there on exposition if you're interested in learning more about it. Because the original short story was so passive and distant, I was still kind of stuck having to write it that way even when I improved it. But if I really wanted to write this again, I'd change the opening entirely. I'd build a scene where this pickpocket actually picks a pocket, where something real actually happens. I'd put the reader down in that scene and allow them to watch what's going on instead of just telling them what sometimes happens. Another quick tip, this one's especially useful for newer writers, don't just hand your story to your reader. Pick your reader up and put them into your story. So making a story about the here and now, adding action and intrigue is what I would do if I was rewriting this story today. However, I'm not going to do that because the rest of the story sucks so much that it's not worth it. Trust me, we have only hit the tip of the iceberg here. But even so, I did still really enjoy looking back at some of my old work and trying to figure out just what the heck I was trying to do. Here's a couple of other videos that you might like. If you enjoyed this video or if you found it useful, don't forget to hit subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.